Splatoon 3 as a game is in a weird spot competitively. Many players are flocking to certain weapons and specials, while other weapons get no attention and desperately need it. Certain maps are really horrible to play on competitively, and special balance is weakening. Thankfully, a new update is going to be released soon, and with it comes a new season. However, as a player who's loved Splatoon since the early days of the second game, I'm really concerned about this update, and I'm worrying for the future of the third installment of the series. So let's go over how big this update is for the game, what actions Nintendo should take to fix the game, with input from competitive players, and let's spread the message to help the dev team act on these problems. I love Splatoon, but I think it can be so much better with just a few changes. So let's discuss them. Far and away, one of Splatoon 3's most egregious problems is special balance. I think in order to pinpoint what needs to be fixed about the game, we should start with a problem that affects every player, competitive or casual, and this is the perfect starting point to me. So what's wrong with specials in this game? Some of you watching are probably aware of the crap tag meta that we are currently in at the moment. You've probably noticed the sheer number of splash dramatics in your matches and competitive teams, and you may have questioned why there's so many of them. Well, the answer lies in its special weapon, the crab tank. The splash dramatic isn't played because of its insane main weapon, or even its sub-weapon. The reason that you see so many splashes in the meta right now is because that weapon is the most effective at charging crab tank. That's all there really is to it. Crab tank is widely agreed to be the best special of the game right now. The crab tank has the range of your average elite, some of the best damage per second in the entire game period, 500 HP to prevent getting shattered, and two firing modes. One of which being like a Hydra Splatling, and the other being like an Explosion, which can hit opponents behind cover. Like any special, the crab tank does have its flaws, of course, having poor turning speed and being vulnerable from the back. However, position to move yourself correctly, and you can make these weaknesses a lot less apparent. Maybe use the crab from a distance and look out for flankers. If you're getting flanked, then maybe you can activate your ball form for full on protection and enhanced mobility. Let's say they break all of your armor. You really aren't punished for that, and you still have 100 HP to take your opponents out. The point is, that the meta is dominated by this one special, and thus a weapon's viability is partly dependent on how well it does versus crab. And this extends over to specials too. Because of crab, search and specials are weaker than they should be. Big Bubbler and Booyah are both fall to crab's insane damage per second. Inkjet gets shot out of the air easily and can't really destroy crab that well. Specials like Ultra Stamp have the damage per second to combat crab's HP, but the problem is that crab can stuff out the stamp's approach thanks to its great firing methods. Nothing crab is essential for the balance of the game, and it will be a lot healthier if we turn it down significantly. Nintendo have already dipped their toes in nerfing this special, so we need to pray that they follow through with that approach and balance the game's specials. We'll discuss what exactly Nintendo should change about crab sunk later on in the video, but we're not exactly done with special balance yet either. Going back to our main question again, why is special balance so bad? Let's take a look at some specials which are too weak right now, and discuss their problems to help them get better. Reef Slider is widely considered to be the worst special in the game, and weapons that have it are hindered because of that. Granted, this special is not useless, it does have its strengths. It can be used to reposition, has intangibility, and it can one-hit KO opponents in a big blast or deal chip damage to finish them off. However, some of these strengths are really not as potent as they seem at first glance. The special has absolutely insane amounts of end lag. This is a common theme with bad specials, but we'll cover that later. The special also has a fairly small direct radius, limiting its ability to kill sometimes. I'll cover what changes the special needs later on, along with the other specials that I'll talk about here. Another special that desperately needs buffs is the Ultra Stamp. This special is way too vulnerable and too easy to counter. It's meant to be an aggressive rushdown special, but it can't do that thanks to its inability to be used safely. Making the special safer to use would go a long way and allow the special to be used in a lot more situations. Inkvac has a hard time in the meta right now because of two main issues. Number one, it gets easily overwhelmed by weapons just shooting at it before it can fire a shot to kill. Number two, it can't support its teammates for very long without getting fully charged, restricting the use of the special. Reducing its vulnerability again will be essential, and it will give Inkvac weapons the supportive role that Nintendo intended them to have in Splatoon 3. In case you haven't noticed already, this game favors survivability, and sadly the super cool aggressive and supportive specials that play offensively end up being the worst. If we can reduce their vulnerability, then every special will be used competitively, and special balance will overall be way healthier. The reason why special balance is so important is because of certain weapons having them. Take the Tetra Duelist for example. This is one of the best main weapons in the entire game. Gets it out with amazing mobility, survivability, good range, good damage, decent paints, and much more. It has a pretty good sub weapon being auto bomb, but it's held back by Reef Slider significantly. Buffing Reef Slider would buff Tetris to help them have a usable special, which should be good considering weapons should be good or bad depending on the weapon itself. Having a weapon be bad because of its special is really sad to see, and a good special balance can help fix that. I really do hope that Nintendo puts more effort into special balance, since if they do, the weapons of the game will feel a lot better. 
Weapon diversity is one of the Splatoon series' most iconic traits, having weapons ranging from guns to paintbrushes to swords. And yet, competitive Splatoon 3 seems to be one of the least diverse scenes as of late. Double or triple splash matic is being run in tournaments, and the worst part is that it's optimal. Of course, Crab Tank is partly to blame for this, but it just sucks that as a result of the specials being unbalanced, you can expect to see at least one splash matic per team. Everyone likes a diverse meta with lots of weapons to play, but with the way weapons are balanced in this game, one class is slowly rising up and destroying us all, the Shooters. Shooter privilege is a term that has been talked about to death in the Splatoon community recently, and while I do not encourage further complaining about it, I would like to explain why it's a bad thing and what it is. By the way, Prochara made a great video on Shooter Bias, so if you want more info then go watch that. I brought in a good friend of mine and competitive player, Brick, to help out with explaining this one. Take it away. Shooter privilege is the idea that shooters in Splatoon 3 are getting treated in better and more fairly than other weapon classes. There are a lot of arguments for shooter privilege being present in the game. Shooters are by far the most diverse and populated weapon class, making up one third of the game's weapons. Shooters are genuinely better competitively than most weapons by the fall of Nintendo or not. They consistently have the best mobility and paint in the game which means they can charge meta specials really effectively. Shooters seem to avoid changes or nerfs and patches while other weapons get completely gutted too. Splash Matic is a shooter that hasn't been touched despite it dominating the game for six months now. There's definitely something up with shooters and their viability. Nintendo is making that pretty obvious at that point. So shooter bias exists and it's pretty bad for the games balance wise. You can expect to see teams with three shooters and sometimes all three of them are crab tank spammers. Now to Nintendo's credit, they've tried to stop the abundance of splash matics Tentatex player shout was introduced into the season prior to this one and its special triple ink strike is a direct counter to HP specials like crab. And now in the new season nintendo did the worst thing they could have possibly done this monstrosity was born and was revealed to us just a few days ago to the average viewer this may not seem too bad but when you look at its kit being triple ink strike and suction bomb it makes it a lot more sense why this is so bad for the game tentatec brought variety to the game and it countered the crab but wasn't just another crab tank anymore which reduced the number of splash matic players then three months later nintendo decided to release another splash which is has better paint than the t-tech and thus will spam triple ink strikes faster, making the splash out way weaker in terms of a niche. This now means this counter to splash o -matic is another splash o -matic. Defeating the purpose of other weapons being played to combat the weapon, this means that quad splash will become meta, and the same weapon, at least two splashes per team, is an absolute minimum now to output and counter crab tank. Weapon diversity is now going to suffer, and unless Nintendo seriously fixes both splash matics the fate of Splatoon 3 could be grim thanks to the single shooter breaking the game. That is the state of weapon diversity, and while Splash gets new kits and no nerfs, the entire Brella class hasn't gotten a single new kit or weapon despite shooters getting 11. Brellas were the main counter to shooters in Splatoon 2, and with them being out of the meta completely, shooters will dominate for as long as Nintendo doesn't care. I'd like to list all of the changes that Nintendo should make to help the game's balance and stop the crab meta. I think that the number one change we need to focus on is nerfing Splash. That weapon needs to get worse, and if it doesn't, it will dominate the game's meta until it does. Reducing its points for special so it can't spam and making its ink efficiency worse will help stop the weapon from breaking the game with special spam. Another change that desperately needs to happen is nerfing Crab Tank. This special completely dominates the meta and shuts off so many options that it's not at all healthy for the game's balance. I would say Crab Tank should get a number of changes just to keep it in check with the other specials. These changes include range drops by 10%. The special duration is now 7 seconds and special power up can only make it up to 9 seconds. When broken, the Crab Tank user is in an lag similar to that of a pre patch reef slider. This encourages Crab Count to play and fighting the special correctly. Overall, these changes will nerf Crab in ways that do not affect the usefulness of the special that much, but it does now have a lot less broken attributes and is more vulnerable. 
Reese Ladder needs some drastic changes so that it doesn't get outclassed by Kraken. Indirect damage is changed from 60 to 65 to help with damage combos. The direct radius is increased slightly. The end lag is now less brutal, making the special more potent and less vulnerable, overall giving it more use as a repositioning tool and an aggressive special. Tinta missiles need to be nerfed so that they don't take over the game when a weapon with good paint gets them. The missiles are now unable to one-shot kill, with 60 direct damage and 30 indirect damage. You can now only lock onto three people with the missiles so that the whole team doesn't get displaced. The ink bag now needs more ink to fully charge the special so that it can support teammates for longer. The radius of the explosion gets buffed slightly to compensate for that. You can fire the ink bag shot instantly now, making the special less vulnerable. Ultra stamp will need to be changed a little. You can no longer hit the stamp from the front, but from the sides you can easily take it out. The movement speed is now increased, giving it the ability to rush down better. The Splat Brella is the only main weapon that I will buff drastically, since the Brella class really has nothing, so this will help the weapon class see more use. The Brella damage will now be increased to 90 to give it its old damage back, and any bugs related to the Brella shield will now be patched. And finally, Inkjet will get a few buffs. I think to reduce its vulnerability, the strafing speed will now be increased by 10%. The Inkjet starts should also do more damage, now doing 150 direct damage to help counter HP specials. And that's all the major changes. This project took a lot of time, so make sure to leave a like and help support the channel by subscribing. Also check out the people that I got together with to record this video. They helped with a bunch of the demonstrations and the balance changes. Extra big thanks to Brick for helping out with talking about shooter privilege. Aside from that, thank you all for watching, and I hope this video gave some insight on the problems with the game, and just how impactful this patch could be. Let's hope the infamous crab tech gets nerfed. Take care everyone, and have a good day.